everyone. Good evening from my end where I'm from at the moment. Um, I'm joining from Europe. Currently I'm Sweden and it's pretty late in here, but we have decided to have a call with um, Cody to discuss more about the skincare journey, discuss more about um, that device that he has been testing for a while. He has been a user um, of a few of our devices. He has been creating different content from different technologies, posting on different social media channels. So um, we decided to have a conversation with Cody. Um, he is committed to sharing uh, how, ways on how you can treat yourself or you can treat your skin in a healthy, natural way. And he has been putting so much content um, online and he has been testing skincare product and as well as skincare devices. And he has been one of the first people um, that started to test the device um, after we have launched and we've um, been into the market for three years now. And I'm gonna um, invite Co Cody to join me here. Um, stuff so if anyone um is here thank you so much feel free to drop your questions um could it let me know if hey Hi. how are I'm, you i'm doing great how are you i'm great thank you can you hear me okay yes perfectly fine you it's all good yep all good um, amazing thank you so much for joining i know it's morning there it is 1 a.m. in Sweden, which is crazy. It was so, such a struggle to find the time that we're going to catch our U.S. and Canadian audience fit with your schedule and also mine. But here we go. We're Absolutely. here. Thank you so much. No, of course. Yeah. yeah um, quick introduction for um, your audience who probably might be joining here. Um, this is Chandresa. I am Influencer Marketing Director at Even Skin and have been hosting a few live events with um, some of our content creators and influencers that have been testing the device. And we are using this more as a platform to speak about anti-aging, or we want to call this pro-aging or aging gracefully process. And um, we have been picking up questions from our customers and all over the place so that you can share more from your experience. And you can do a quick introduction for anyone who doesn't know Cody yet. Sure, thank you. So um, I have a YouTube channel called The Skin Code by Cody, where I really do, as Quindressa indicated before, I really talk about um, all sorts of um, devices and skincare products to treat a range of different conditions um, or, or things with uh, the skin that people want to improve. So like you said, you know, I like the term, you know, aging gracefully and things like that. And um, people can interpret that in different ways. Some people think that means you don't do anything at all and you just live life and however you end up is how you end up. And obviously I have a little, uh, a slightly different definition and I'm, I'm certainly uh, willing to take steps to, um, I guess, improve the health and the quality of my skin. And I think there's obviously a, a huge population of people, um, you know, that are now becoming more and more willing to, um, you know, try different things to, to treat um, issues with their skin. Correct. And tell us more about your definition in this process, because you have flawless skin. Like you're glowing <laughs> and any time I'm watching one of your new recommendation or anything you post on you, I'm like, oh my God, he never ages. Like he's just like blowing <laughs> all the time. Tell us the secret. <laughs> oh, look, uh, that's, it's, you know, people do sometimes, you know, say, you know, ask me these sorts of things. And look, I'm certainly not immune from aging. If I, if I look at, you know, photos of myself from five years ago, 10 years ago, obviously I see a, a difference as I get older and our skin does change. And um, I think for me, what's really kind of worked well for me over the years is I have learned to accept that, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to stop it forever. I'm not going to be able to, you know, prevent myself from aging. 
Um, but, you know, doing all these little things, whether it is skincare or devices, I'm also um, an advocate for professional treatments in clinic if people want, you know, um, you know more, I guess, uh, dramatic results. Yeah. Um, there's obviously a lot out there that people can use. Um, and also, I think really how we live our lives and how we look after ourselves. Like, I certainly do not have a flawless diet. Um, but, you know, I, I do try to eat healthily and um, I'm not a big drinker. I don't drink a lot of alcohol. Um, so I think really trying to take care of yourself really uh, yeah. helps as well. A hundred percent. And this is part of like a few of discussions we have with customers. Sometimes they're like, okay, you have promised us to see results, for example, in a month or in a two month, depending on what they hear, the comment from different influencers and all that. And they're like, I've been using this for six months and probably I'm not seeing the same results. And of course, it's not about the device or you're using or the skincare. It's more of a lifestyle kind of the process of how you eat, how you sleep, um, how stressed you are, the environment. So there are many factors that are kind of affecting the process and how we're aging. So it's more about of a lifestyle that we can do in order to age gracefully rather than just like, okay, I got this one. I'm not seeing the results so far. So thank you for bringing that up. That is very important. For sure. And I think another um, key factor in all of this, you know, taking care of your skin or achieving the results that you want to achieve, um, obviously consistency is key. It's just like working out at the gym. You can't go one day for five hours and then not go back for yeah. six months and expect to maintain the results. It's exactly the same with skincare. You need to be obviously using the right products for your skin you know, wearing a sunscreen every day and, you know, using devices like the Lumo and the Venus to really maintain those results that you want to see, it, it does take yeah. um, a consistent approach. Yeah. So were you one of those people like that from your 20s or even earlier than that, you knew that you need your SPF on and you need to take care of your skin or was it more of a process than you realized later on they're like, okay, I see signs of age, you know, I need to do something. And then you start researching and do all the hard work. Yeah, good question. So I think anyone who's really invested and interested in skincare, really, if you scratch beneath the surface, you know, everyone will have some sort of skincare story that really drew them to skincare. Um, and, you know, that can be anything as, as, you know, when we're younger, we can have all sorts of skin issues around you know, psoriasis, eczema, ac acne, all those sorts of things. Um, so for me, I would say two things. Obviously, I grew up in Australia, in southeast Queensland. So obviously, our sun here is very aggressive on the skin. Um, and I grew up basically at the beach. So I spent a huge amount of time in my younger years in the sun. Amazing. And <laughs> yes, that's right. And um I think when I was about 14, I had, um, if people look really closely in any of my content, on the bottom right corner of my bottom lip, I have a scar. And um, that is because I had early signs of what they were concerned was going to be skin cancer. So that was when I was 14. I had to go to a, a surgeon and get that cut off. Mm -hmm. They sent it to get tested. Um, and fortunately, it was benign. There was nothing kind of wrong there but I think that even as like a 14 year old um, boy in, in like the late 90s when yeah sunscreen was obviously we knew we needed to wear sunscreen but 14 year old kids didn't really care that much about it um, but I certainly then became massively focused on sunscreen and making sure I was doing the right thing and then from there I think I did have um, experiences with acne like most you know teenagers and um i think that got me really interested in um you know how i can treat that and look after my skin as yeah. best as possible that, that makes sense sometimes it's like there needs to be an event for you to realize okay and some of the people are just kind of realizing that you need to take care of your skin after they are in the 30s or 40s so it is so nice that nowadays there's so much content about SPF in the first place because 
I get bombarded with content, like reapply your SPF and all that. It, it, it's so nice because like you have your SPF at your desk and then there's one in the bag and all that, which is so important. But it's so nice that like conversation like this, uh, we get comments from people. Thank you so much for discussing such stuff and reminding me that I need to do this and all of that. So that is very important. And it wasn't similar uh, many years ago when there wasn't that much content around skincare and the ways that you need to that you can treat your skin at home, for example. So um, that is very important. I had another question. How did you get into YouTube? Because that is something interesting. So many people um, we talk to, they have tons of skincare devices, tons of skincare product. They're just not creating reviews and any of that on YouTube. So I want to know, how. what was your story? Uh, so again, I probably had the idea to start creating videos on YouTube around, I'd say about six or seven years ago. So quite a long time ago. And I think my reluctance was just, you know, I'm so busy. How am I going to fit this into my schedule? And I was still probably a little bit uncomfortable. Like, you know, regardless what people think, I, I really don't love sitting in front of a camera. It's, it can be very confronting. I, um, I think for people, when you first sit down and you record yourself and then you've got to watch back your own content of yourself, it's very confronting. Um, and so I, do, I certainly don't love that aspect of it, but I think for me, what really pushed me to get into it is there weren't many men in the market that were really talking about beauty devices. And obviously men face the exact same, um, aging process, yeah. um, that women do. And we have acne and all of these other sorts of things as well. So um i really kind of wanted to that that's what kind of pushed me to to start the channel and also even when i would buy devices or look at devices the first thing i would do is look for reviews or look for people talking about the product so that i knew well does it work or does it not work and um because yeah i I'd, I'd spent you know going back you know seven eight years ago you know, I'd spend so much money on all of these devices and then I'd get these devices and they didn't really do much. And mm -hmm. I was just getting this big collection of things that didn't really um, help. So I thought that's value that mm -hmm. I can bring to people. And thank you so much for doing that because you have been one of the first male influencers that we got to um, get the device out there and just like share more um, about from your experience, basically. So um it is also like for us and our team who are searching for people that we could collaborate with this gets very hard for us to find some male influencers and as you mentioned you're also aging and it is it's, it's exactly the same process that goes for, for both gender but that we're just so much in front with like all this female content about taking care of your skin and then if there's a man um talking about devices it's changing right now because like there's more um uh, men that are creating content at the moment, but um, we're lacking the in-depth kind of reviews that you usually do. So um, that was very important. And to, to be honest, when I first got it um, into your channel, I was like, he looks very young. Like your skin was like so nice. I was like, okay, he's talking about devices. He's talking about those technologies and the, all of those modalities. So he's testing a few. So then we reached out and then we got an amazing collaboration as you were testing the Lumo and the Venus. Um, tell me more about the process of the, how was your experience more with the Lumo and the Venus? Because there are people interested to in know um, how you see results, how long did it take for you to notice something? And it's worth mentioning that if you are already t treating your skin with other devices as um, you already did and you were doing so many things to take care of your skin, you don't see like that much of a difference compared to, let's say, someone who never did anything to their skin. So for you, it was more of a long, longer journey. And um, yeah, tell, tell us more about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's a very good point because I think that's one thing I get asked all the time is um you know well why do you even need these devices or use these devices you know and you know i just want to be very clear my skin is absolutely not perfect i have 
good days and bad days with my skin like everyone else and um but with with the lumo and the venus in particular so and i'm i'm a very small content creator like i never had an objective to be some influencer or anything like that i just genuinely was so interested in you know skincare and these sorts of devices that's what really pushed me to do it but um, even as a, a small influencer or content creator, what, I'm, what I was really shocked by when I started was so many brands reaching out to, um, you know, give me their device or, you know, um, asking me to review their devices. And I quickly decided that obviously I really just wanted to focus on brands that I could really see the quality and the value in the device and actual results from the device. So whilst I do all of these other things to my skin, like I've had all sorts of lasers and other treatments yeah. over the years, um, the Lumo in particular, when I first got the device, I was definitely amazed at even just the feeling of the device, like holding the device, it felt very well manufactured. Yeah. Like this was not like, so many other devices I'd come across, which were these really like, um, you know, flimsy, cheaply made devices. So I was very impressed by the Lumo as soon as I did receive it. Then when I used it, I, with most devices that I do get, I usually go straight to the highest setting and use it straight away. I'm like, you know, if I've been in a clinic and had my face, you know, blasted to pieces, with an ablative laser then you know what's this device going to do that's you know concerning to me so with the lumo though in particular the two main um settings that i use is the e and i mode to really help push um skincare products and the ingredients and nutrients into our skin obviously because we all spend so much money on our skincare so you want to make sure it's getting to the as deeply into the uh, epidermis and the dermis as much as possible um, and the EMS mode. So the EMS mode is definitely my favorite uh, mode that I, I use with the device. And I still honestly flick back and forth between the second setting and the third setting. So it is such an incredibly yeah. powerful technology and I can really feel it in my face. So. I was certainly very impressed with that. Um, and look, I would say it was around five or six weeks I started to see a change and an improvement in my skin yeah. um, with the Lumo. So I was really impressed with that. Um, and similar with the Venus, obviously, like this tiny little, you know, kind of pen sized device. Um, you know, using that twice a day for it only used it. I, I probably only used it for maybe three minutes a day. So it was mm -hmm. very, very quick yeah. when I was doing my skincare, I just use a serum and then use that device to go kind of in that under eye area and just above my eye. And again, like it was just such a powerful little yeah. device that really helped treat this part because certainly like a lot of people where I do show my age more than anywhere is definitely in that under eye area. So anything that treats that I will use all day yeah. long. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I had amazing results with both. Yeah, I bet when you got the Luma, you were like, I'm going to go up to level five and do yeah. this. <laughs> exactly right. But then you just had the power of the, the well, for anyone who doesn't know the EMS, you're going to feel like your muscles are twitching and it's, it is the same as working out. So, this is why we also recommend not to overdo with the R app and the EMS because it is a process that you're kind of okay. I need my muscle working. They are contracting. Um, you also need to use a conduction gel in order for the muscle to have some conduction for muscles to contract. But if you're doing this too much or at the highest level and you're not ready, it would be same as going to the gym and then you're just like doing the heavy lifting so much, then you're just gonna feel a numbness and probably. Um, it needs a few days in order to eat, heal. So this is why we also recommend that once you're starting the, using the Lumo, start with the lowest level, start only once a week. So then this way you also give your skin um, some time to recover because it is a very powerful device. And um, after you 
kind of go after the first month over two to three weeks you can um start to do this twice a week so are you in maintenance mode i'm guessing um right now you have quite a few time with the lumo and other devices you're making yes. Yeah. So look, it, it does vary. And obviously I fit it in with all sorts of other things that I, I do as well. But I would say at the moment with the Lumo, most weeks I'm using it once a week. And then every now and then, if I feel like I need a little more, then I'll use it twice a week, about yeah. four days apart. Yeah. Um, I, I got a, We got a question here um, from Rose. I am in my 50s. What routine would you recommend for jowls and the neck and what products to tighten the skin? And you have more experience with devices and all that, so um, you could take that. Yeah, sure. So look, it's very interesting. I always see questions around the neck and obviously, um, you know, we want our neck to age as nicely as we want our faces to age and the same as our hands and the skin on the rest of our body. Um, I'm I'm surprised at how many products there are in the market that really advertise this will tighten the skin on your neck. Um, I will be completely transparent. I've never seen a product yet in the market that advertises to tighten the neck that when I really dive deeply into the ingredients, I don't see anything particularly impressive there. So when it comes to tightening the skin, um, in terms of skincare, and you're really wanting to get those results um, from skincare. Um, so whether to tighten the neck because you want it to be like a little bit more, a little tighter or lifted, or if you're treating those bands that wrap around our neck, I certainly have those lines around my neck that wrap around there. Um, and I can tell you those bands around my neck now are better so I'm 38 now and they're better now than what they were when I was in my early thirties. Mm. And the biggest contributor to that when it comes to skincare is um, tretinoin. So I'm a huge, um, I, I, I'm a huge fan of prescription skincare, um, particularly when you've got things like that, that you're really wanting to treat. Mm. Um, tretinoin is obviously a retinoid, so you do need a script, um, you know, and I'm sure the rules may change slightly around the world, but um, you do generally need a prescription from a GP. Um, and tretinoin can also be used to treat acne, pimples, yeah. scarring, um, that sort of stuff. But look, if I was to recommend um, to someone, because my sister, I do have a, an older sister, and she asks me all the time what she can do to help her neck. Um, I certainly say to start with tretinoin, really dilute that. You don't want to go for a full strength tretinoin all at once because you will, um, you know, really see the side effects um, in terms of redness, flakiness, itching of the skin. Um, but, you know, if you start really slowly and build that up, I think tretinoin can give you fantastic results yeah. um, in terms of treating the signs of aging of the neck. Now, depending on the level of, aging there it is important to also be realistic about the results that anyone can achieve from skincare alone in tightening that area um, but you know devices like the lumo um, which i usually just use down the main sides of my neck that again can really help you know stimulating those muscles um, with the ems mode and even radio frequency radio frequency um just for anyone who doesn't know obviously heating the skin really promotes the production of elastin and collagen which are really the building blocks of our skin um that can really help improve yeah. um you know the tightness of the skin as well so they're, they're the things that i would suggest yeah and for any where you would start um it, if it's um a skincare product or a device give it some time in order to see results because consistency is the key and you, Cody already mentioned this before, but it really goes down to what you're investing. And if, even if it's like um, anything, vitamin A, so you don't need to go to prescription the first, uh, the first time, start with something that you can tolerate and then start a build up as you go. And the same would go for um, the devices because we hear sometimes people, they're like, okay, I have everything do I need to get this? No, you don't need to get a Lumo. No, you don't need to get a Mirage LED face mask. If you already have one, 
just use that one, give it some time in order to see a result because those are research technologies and there has been so much time invested in so many other companies that they put into the devices in order to come up with safe at home device because you can also get a treatment such as um, radio frequency and EMS and all of the LED light therapy and microcurrent, all of those, you can get this in a treatment, but it's about a smaller device that you can use at home, that you're going to be consistent with it. And um, there has been so much research done to make them safe. So um, you're not getting the, the power level that you would get in a clinic. So that is some very smart um, integration that usually the devices um, have. And I want to get to a question um, shared here. Um, can you adjust the temperature on your device? And no, you cannot. Um, there is no feature as um, adjusting the temperature. However, the device itself has smart sensors, so it's going to control the temperature itself. It goes up to 42 degrees Celsius. So then this way, whenever you're doing the treatment, you always need to do like the um, upper motion linear or like you're doing circles but or there's another way like you can hold the device in one spot for um just a few seconds in order like that way you're going to feel a bit more heat but the the device itself has the sensor so it's going to feel what temperature um it's going up to and then it's going to adjust if it if it tends to go higher it's just going to drop and especially like with the new luma that we're coming up to right now with which is the luma plus um it's even a more precise um temperature control so there is no feature such as adjusting but um there are things that devices integrate and whenever you're looking for an rf device especially anyone they need to check if there is um, a temperature control otherwise if the device is going to overheat then you might be um, causing more damage than getting the benefits from the device absolutely yeah, um, checking a few more questions that I also gathered um, from before. Yeah, we also get questions. What do you recommend um, in terms of like devices and in different ages? Because usually people are going on YouTube. They're like, what do I need to start using? And someone in their 20s, 30s and 40s and 50s, like there are so many things one can do. And you have tested quite a few devices and technologies. so what would be your recommendation in terms of technologies based on age yeah look that's it's i've i've seen that question asked in certain forums as well and i find it really interesting because obviously we all age differently and people need different technologies and treatments at different times so i bring it i try to move away from age and more think well what's what's really the thing like the issue uh, or concern that you're really trying to address. And I try to bring it back to that. So, you know, if you're in your early 20s or even your 30s or 40s and you're still breaking out from time to time, like I certainly still, you know, get pimples and acne from time to time. Obviously, blue light therapy is my go-to treatment um, for, for that, which has worked really, really well. Um, and again, as we get a little older, um, a lot of the, I guess, the main concerns I see from people is that dropping as the, you know, the muscles um, in our face obviously weaken over time um, and we lose some of that fat in our face. That obviously does show that the face is essentially dropping and the neck and other, other parts of our bodies. Um, with that, you really want to um, do things like the EMS will really help to strengthen those muscles. Um, and the radio frequency will really, again, help to um, promote the production of elastin and collagen to lift and tighten the skin. Um, they're the main ones. Then if you've got other, I guess, surface level conditions, um, you know, if you're wanting to treat like uneven skin tone and that sort of thing, um, I am an, a massive fan of red light therapy. Um, there is a huge yeah. amount of research behind um, red light therapy. It's actually the the first uh, device I ever purchased. I believe it was actually a Canadian brand. Uh, I don't know if they're still around. They're called Tanda. And um, they had a blue light device and a red light device that you kind of tr held onto the skin. Um, but yeah, look, that's they're my main go-to technology. Certainly 
um, at home that I I would recommend for various, you know, aging at various ages. Yeah. Um, and that makes total, total sense. And in terms of ingredients and like skincare products, um, what would be your recommendation for someone in their 20s? I usually say hydration and like keep your skincare routine simple, but you have tested a few. So what would you recommend for a youthful kind of uh, skin? Yeah, look, I think um, certainly one of the biggest learnings I had over the years was I used to think that the more expensive a product is, the more effective it will be. Um, that is absolutely not the case. I can remember in my mid twenties, I went into a department store and I was completely sold, um, by the brand SK2. They told me the whole story of, you know, the, the workers making the sake and their hands were flawless. And even into their sixties and seventies, they had these young looking hands because they were working in the sake and then they fermented this ingredient into this Patera ingredient that is the cornerstone of the SK2 brand. Um, and SK2, don't get me wrong, they have some great products, yeah. but they also have some products that aren't particularly special or effective. Um, so look, I would say generally, again, if we look at it at an, an, an age range, you hit, the, you hit the nail on the head. When we're younger, hydration is critical. Um, or for people with oilier skin, really helping to balance that oil production in the skin. Um, but an SPF is absolutely critical for everyone at every age, um, even yeah. young children. Um, and obviously my experience is largely Australia because we do have such a harsh yeah. climate. Um, but certainly, you know, sunscreen is absolutely critical. And like I, I said to my sister about 10 years ago, and she still references back to it is, you know, there's no skincare product that has the anti-aging benefits of a wide brim hat. So if you are avoiding that sun exposure, yeah. there is no treatment, there is no skincare product that is more effective at anti-aging. So really, you know, um, looking after yourself and um, obviously wearing a sunscreen. Um, but look, other than that ingredients, I love vitamin C, you know, vitamin C is a, a key ingredient. It helps, um, vitamin C can actually work if you wear it, put it on in the morning and wear it with a sunscreen and it can actually nice. help make the sunscreen okay. more yeah. effective. Yeah. So they really complement one another. Um, but it's also really good to treat redness and uneven skin tone. Um, and I, again, going back to the prescription, uh, skincare, Obviously, I love tretinoin. I went from yeah. retinoids as a teenager, so different as an example. I was, was prescribed when I was a teenager to treat my acne. And then I later learned that a side effect of retinoids is they also have fantastic anti-aging properties. Um, so I've used it kind of now for, you know, two decades. Um, and so, yeah, definitely tretinoin in particular is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Tazaratine is another really great retinoid that I also use. Um, and peptides. I, yeah. I love peptides. There are some fantastic products around. Um, I am a huge supporter of Paula's Choice, the skincare brand. Over yeah, the years, I've been, been using it. Paula's. I've been using Paula's Choice since, mm -hmm. you know, she used to basically sell it in what looked like little shampoo bottles. Um, so the very, very kind of early on in her, um, like in her brand development, um, and also BHA is another thing I would really point out, yeah. um, beta hydroxy acid, yeah, yeah really helps Exfoliate. to anyone who does have, you know, pimples or, you know, some oil production that they want to control. Um, BHA chemical exfoliant is amazing, yeah. um, at treating that. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. We're going to get one more question and we're going to let you go. I know you have an appointment, so you need to run. No um, there is a comment coming from Dream Skin by Inga. Um, how would you use radio frequency device on your neck? And um, that could be any radio frequency devices you have had before um, with uh, the Lumo. You can treat full face, neck and decolletage. So how do you treat your neck? 
Yeah, look, great question. And look, obviously, this is different between men and women and different men. You know, we're all built differently. Um, I'm not sure how much you can see, but I do have a fairly pronounced Adam's apple in my mm -hmm. neck. So it does drop out quite a bit. So I do tend to avoid that center of my neck. Um, obviously, it's, you know, we've got our thyroid there and you just want to be somewhat yeah. sensitive to, um, you know, that. Um, but generally, my neck with um, the Lumo in particular, or any, as you said, any radio frequency device, I do treat um, certainly just behind my ear, down that mm. whole side of my neck, and right into the internal part of my neck, just avoiding that central area there. So, you know, again, just moving um, the device around, whatever device you're using, if it's the Lumo um, or one of the other devices, but just really until you get a good amount of heat, that's what you really want. You want that heat. It doesn't necessarily mean the hotter, the better. So that's really important to remember. Yeah. Obviously, with radio frequency, you definitely want to keep the device moving, either in a circular motion or keep swiping it in a linear motion. Um, but getting that heat to the skin on the neck will really help promote that production yeah. of elastin and collagen and help you know, the building blocks of your skin, um, you know, ideally make your skin look as healthy as possible. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like you can use um, the radio frequency all over your neck. You only need to avoid the thyroid area. The reason for that is because it hasn't been researched and like what would be the effects of the radio frequency over the thyroid. So it's best to avoid that area. I know tricks on how people usually like pull the skin and do the treatment so they just can get as much as possible. But one of the main concerns usually people uh, for people it is the jawline and like the um, chin or under chin here. So you can use the device under here. So like it, it would be perfectly fine if you need to treat that area. Usually people see lots of results in this um, in the jawline, especially because of the radio frequency and combination with the EMS. So. Um, as the question for the Lumo, you can definitely use that, but please check with the brand or um, any product that you're using if that is allowed, because sometimes devices are designed for uh, specific um, areas or specific conditions, and then this way you know you're using the device right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, she said thank you so much. You're welcome. And if anyone has any more questions, feel free to drop. We're going to repost this live so people could watch later as we're joining from three different time zones. So it's going to be so weird um, to see me here in, <laughs> in the night. There's Cody there early um, in the morning. So Cody, thank you so much for joining. If anyone has more questions, feel free to drop them. We'll be able to answer them during the weekend. So um, um you'll get your answers there and if you need anything else like more specific feel free to send a personal message to us or cody and we'll be there to help you out awesome thanks so much it was great uh chatting to you again it's been yeah. a long time yeah thank you so much this was so much fun and um good night everyone have a good day there <laughs> you too see you later yeah see you bye bye